Alright guys, welcome back. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video from this perspective, but it's the only way I can really figure out how to show off this book. Today we're going to be taking a look at this strategy guide I found at a small game store. That's the Lunar 2 Eternal Blue Complete Official Strategy Guide by Working Designs. And um, this was a pretty fantastic find. Um, I, I'm really getting into buying uh, strategy guides. Not so much to use for the games, but just to have for more artwork. And um, it's just something fun to look at every now and then. And this is definitely one of the best strategy guide art books, you know, making of books that I've ever seen. It's basically everything in one. And uh, when I saw this on the shelf, my jaw literally dropped because... You don't see this working design stuff around much anymore. Of course, you can find it on the internet, but um, you know, seeing it out in the wild, especially for me living here in southeastern Ohio, it's <laughs> it's kind of something that you don't see every day. So um, definitely snatched this up. Didn't even think about it. Just grabbed it and then looked at the price. And re you know, ten dollars was a reasonable price for me. More than reasonable. I actually would have paid you know probably double that um, to get this book. But um, going to take a look at it today. And um, this is the front cover here, which is, you know, has all the girls there doing their little thing. Um, and the back here, you know, you have Hero and Lucia there, and then you have all the little little pictures of, you know, the ancillary, not ancillary characters, but the other characters in your party and stuff. And there's that text there. Um, I'm, I'll probably show off some text in this, but you guys, you know, of course, you can just pause it and take a look at the text. So... The cool thing about this, which I'm, I don't have it on camera there, is that it is a double-sided cover. You know, like, a lot of X-Seed games are really doing this now. And, um, you know, while this is not my favorite artwork from Lunar 2, um, I actually prefer the cover of the Sega Saturn version of Lunar 2. Um, it's still cool to have, you know, that was the American artwork right there. Well, not the American artwork, but that's what they used for the, the cover of the American um, release. But uh, you got the same cover there on the back, and then you got duplications of the inside of the dust jacket there. So, very nice. I think I'm going to keep it this way, though, because um, this one was not reversed ever. So, it's not... You know, when you, when you bend these things the opposite way, the crease here will get um, very easy to tear. So, I'm trying to... Go I'm going to take as good care of this as I can. But um, the cover here, you got that nice embossing like you do on the... Um, Oh, I mean, let me grab it here real quick and show you. Ugh. You know, not as um, fancy as the the manual, but still very nice. And it's bas it's the same kind of um, you know binding there. So anyway, let's take a look through this now. Um, I'm not sure how long I'm going to go on with this because we're already at three minutes here. But um, I did want to show off quite a bit of this, and um, I've looked through this and leafed through it. But, um, you know, a lot of this is going to be stuff that I see for the first time as well. And there you have the table of contents. And then we get into the characters here. you got Hero and Ruby, Lucia and Gwen, or Gawain, Ronfar, Jean. Really nice stuff here. Um, I love it when these um, books... Oh, who's that? I don't know. Um... I love it when these books take the time to go through the characters and give you little biographies on them. And then, of course, we have um, now. See, this is the, we have the, just the normal stuff where it talks about the weapons and stuff. But see, here's the cool thing. You know, like I was saying in the, in the collection video, I'm bumping the camera. This is all about the making of the galleon puppets. And um, you know, why would this be in here? I mean, well, obviously, it's a you know a um, all the rejected lunar pack ends. That's kind of cool. Huh. But, um, you know, it, it is an advertisement piece also for Working Designs to bring out their stuff. Like, look, there's all the pictures of the, uh, you know, when they, when they do their talking. And th th there was, um, I ran across a thing. There is a very small, like, picture of all the, um, the sprites right there. Let me get up real close there. That is all of the character sprites in the game. Very small. But still, you know, I mean, I would, I would prefer that to be an entire page on its own. But still, that's something that you don't see in other strategy guides. And you got, you know, house artwork there. Just really nice. Um, I really miss working designs. Ah, get back on screen. I tried to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. If I find something really interesting, 
I'll of course bring it up. Here's some original artwork, you know, hand-drawn artwork there. Not in-game stuff, but uh, hand-drawn. And it just goes through all their little, you know, individual skills. I don't know if anyone else has ever really gone through this. Um, this might be a really boring video because I'm actually kind of taking a look too. So um, we're going on this journey together. I'm, I'm going to try not to chat during this entire thing. And probably when I watch this back, I'm going to realize that the light is bleaching out the pages and that we're you guys aren't seeing anything. But uh, we'll definitely, if that happens, we'll uh, reshoot the video. But um, here's all your, you know, your bestiary. Going through all the enemies in the game. And it's just the artwork from the game. Nothing too fancy yet. Let me just go through this real quick because it's... Oh, you know, there we go. There's some nice artwork. See? I mean, very just nice stuff. Um, wow. Here's a big thing. Uh, talking about you know how you're getting ready to immerse yourself in the world of Lunar 2. And like I was saying, um, anime check. Um, every anime cutscene that's in the game, they have the script or, you know just the description of the scene um, from the game script in there. So, very nice stuff. You know, I, would, I can't think of any other uh, strategy guide, you know, that takes the time. Kicking it old school. What's this? Oh, this is talking about how um, they, they did, redid things from the Sega CD version. So that's, that's kind of neat. Let's see if I can bring it up there. I don't know if you guys can read that on there or not. But uh, if you want to pause it there and read through that, there you go, kicking it old school. I love looking at these maps, you know, it's story check. See, I mean, I, I just, I, I just, I am flabbergasted by this thing because it is just so awesome. And it really does make me want to go out and try to find the one for Silver Star Story. I, I would, I would pay, I would easily pay 50, 60 bucks for this. It's just that cool to have. Again, anime checks, retro checks, Curse of Red, or Curse of Bedhead. There are several minor differences between the Sega CD and PlayStation versions of Lunar 2. During the Blue Spire, and go in this portion. Huh. See, like here, you guys can pause it there again and see, um, you know, it talks about the difference between the Sega CD version and the PlayStation version. You don't get that anywhere else, but, you know, Working Designs was really proud of the stuff that they put out. And, you know, not all of their games were fantastic that they decided to bring over, but uh, the Lunar games definitely were. And if you guys haven't played Lunar, um, I, I, I do not know if they're on PSN. I know you guys can go out and get Silver Star Harmony for the PSP, and I would, you know, I've heard there's, um, I haven't got around the planet yet because... I don't want to burn through all my Lunar games. I want to have, you know, Lunar games to play, even though it's the same game over and over again. But, um, I, uh, haven't got into... Oh, there's the... Haha! -ha, there's the famous scene right there where Hero's taking a bath and Lucia walks in and goes to bathe with him. And then you sort of get to see the, um... And she doesn't understand why Hero's reacting the way he is, you know, because she does, doesn't understand human nature. And then later in the game, as, you know, she travels with Hero, there's another bathing scene that's a lot, you know, different. And, I don't know, their their story is just a lot of fun. I really like the idea of Lucia being trapped. Oh, see, here's something cool. Um, this must just be just a fun little manga thing they put in there. Um, Lunatic Parade is a serialized comic strip which originally appeared in various 1994 issues of the Japanese video game Mega Drive Fan. Hmm. So this is a little um, comic, very little, uh, comic that appeared in a uh, Japanese magazine for the game. I'm telling you guys, go on eBay. I don't, I don't, I've, I've been mean to look on the prices of this on eBay just to see what it's going for. Because I, I want to know if I found something really nice, which, I mean, you know, what strategy guide do you get that has ribbon in it to mark your place? I'm usually I'm using post-it notes. But, um, what was I saying beforehand? Uh, I, I don't know, I got distracted. But, um, anyway, I just, I look at the, the care and the craftsmanship that go into this. And, you know... Working designs went down because, you know, they, they did put all this effort into this stuff. And they brought out niche titles. And it kind of makes me worried about X-Seed a little bit. Because, you know, X-Seed kind of does the same thing. Hold on. 
here's the thing with the scenario writer there talking about the storyline. Like I said, um, I'm just looking at this through the, the Flip HD little screen. I don't know how much of this will pick up, but um, if it does pick up, you guys can pause it there and read it. Um, but it makes me worry about Xseed because they do bring out like niche titles like Fishing Resort and Solo to Robo. But they don't go as in, in as lavish detail as Working Designs did. Like, you know, Working Designs, you just got a bunch of crap with the extra games. Like, um, the Okami Box and um, Eternal Blue. All the stuff you got in Ark the Lad Collection. I mean, it's just ridiculous, you know. But, uh, okay, here's that other scene. Um, which I might be spoiling things for you guys. You guys, I mean, not really. I don't know. But that's another scene where Lucia is bathing nude and Hero just kind of stumbles across her. And she's embarrassed by her nudity, which she wasn't embarrassed in the first or the the scene that preceded it, you know, a couple hours back in the game. So it kind of tells a story about how she, you know, she starts off as sort of this weapon and she really becomes a very, you know, very beautiful young lady that, of course, Hero falls in love with. Who wouldn't? We're all, we, we are all, uh, <laughs> we all wish that there were girls out there with blue hair that we can fall in love with. But the, there's some more of that lunatic parade, which I'm going to have to go back and look through. It's all translated in English, which you guys can see there. I'll try to put the panels in the correct order so you guys, if you want to pause and read, if it picks up. I don't know if it will. But um, it makes me worry about Xseed because I, I, I feel like, you know, they are, they are the modern day working designs or as close as we're going to get to having working designs back. But um, um, the... The head honcho of Working Designs, which Victor Ireland, that's his name, he actually did start another game called like Gadgen Gameworks or something. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But um, so far, I don't think they've put out very many games, but I, I, I keep hoping that uh, eventually they'll start, um, you know, they'll start putting out some stuff and it'll go back to sort of the Working Designs mentality. Because I, you know, in a lot of ways, I remember when buying, like, DVDs, for instance, and we get, like, you know, little booklets inside the DVDs that talk about the making of the movie and stuff. And now, like, DVDs are just as bare bones as you can get. And, like, you know, um, just buying, you know, PlayStation 2 games and seeing the booklets you got in that. And then I just got Dead Island, and the booklet, basically, it just tells you the controls and says go. And um, I, I miss this sort of, you know... I miss this celebration of what the game is, and you really get that when you buy, like, the Lunars for the PlayStation 1, and especially with this, you get to see, like, the love. Just, I mean, these guys, not only, let me get that real closer there so you can see the words, not only, um, you know, did they do this out of a business decision, but they also, um, you know did this out of a love of these games and it really comes across in this stuff just how much working designs really believed in uh, the games that they were putting out which of course at the time you know they didn't sell like crazy they should have in in the wake of final fantasy 7 but i don't think they were hot sellers but um definitely definitely uh they're cherished now so Anime check. Death of the Blue Star continued. Hmm. Just fantastic. <laughs> He's back. Hopefully this is kind of picking up on the screen. I don't know. Wow, that's... that. Oh, yeah. That's that long scene. Wow. Zophar versus Lucia. God, such a good game. Um, unfortunately, they haven't brought Eternal Blue out on the PSP. I'm hoping... That um, they bring it out on the Vita. Wouldn't that be awesome? But, um, you know, Eternal Blue, I have it for the PS1. I have it for the Sega Saturn. And I have it for the um, Sega CD. So I do have some more Eternal Blues to go through. Of course, when I play the Sega Saturn version, it's going to be in Japanese. But by that time, I'll know these games, you know, front and back. Uh, here we got more Lunatic Parade. So let me get it up there so you guys... I want you guys... to to uh, be able to experience that. Those who want to read it can pause and try to read it. If you can't read it, guys, I apologize. I'm doing my best here with what I got. But um, I know there's a lot of people out there who love Lunar. And um, 
you know, try to do something nice for you guys. For those of you who don't have this or don't have the ability to get it. Retro check. Different dungeons, huh? Sega CD version of Lunar 2, Eternal Blue Complete, also had an epilogue, unlike the PlayStation. But unlike the PlayStation version, there was only five new dungeons. Hmm. Fun. I didn't go back and do the, the dungeons. I, I probably should. But um, we're getting towards the end where the stickers are, and that is causing the pages to flip up. So, you know, this is all just still strategy guy stuff. I'm going through, you know, page by page because there, there's just so much little things I want to show you guys. But I think we're getting mostly to the end game here. And, uh, oh, there's another lunatic parade. Oh, I hate that sound. I don't know if that picked up or not. Because of those stickers back there, they're kind of stuck to the page with, I don't know, some kind of adhesive. And every time you turn the page, like, right there, it just crinkles. And I'm like, oh, God, I'm breaking the spine of the book. But, you know, this thing's kind of old. So, older, I should say. And um, I'm surprised I found it in such good condition. Okay, we're back to maps. But, um, found it in such good con Ugh. Get on screen. Good condition. It was a little, it did smell a little bit like smoke, and there was dust on it. And then when I took off the the dust jacket, there was a spider web inside of it. So I had to clean it up a little bit. But other than that, you know, oh, there's some pictures of the bromides, which of course, you know, if you played the games, um, if you played the games, um, yeah, you've collected the bromides, and you know how they're they're kind of scandalous. That's a nice piece of art right there. Hopefully, if I leave and stay on that long enough, that'll be, like, the title shot. But, uh, probably not. Lunatic Parade again! So much of this comic in there. Once again, just pause, and if you can make out the words, fantastic. If not, I apologize. But, uh, like I said, doing my best. Let's see, is it continue on the next page? Yeah, looks like this is the last one. So there's that, and then there's that. Hopefully it picks up. And then we got the stickers here, which, my God, I was so surprised to see that all these were still in there. You know, got all the characters, artwork, artwork. Uh, that looks like memory memory card stickers. And then let's flip it, and we got uh, we got the bromides in sticker form, which, you know, I don't see. Well, they got the. That one scandalous one there. Oh, they got Jean, all scandalous. I really like this one of Lucia. I don't know why. I really, uh, I think I'm not zoomed in very well, but um, mystery. Jean, Lucia. Ah, uh, you gotta get the Borgen one. You gotta have that one. That's the sexiest one in the book. But see right there how like it's separating a little bit like that. I mean, it, it'll hold up once I close the book back up. Oh, there's. I got. Oh, well, two mysteries. Two of the same ones. That's weird. And what's next? Oh, there. Oh, I'm getting caught on the tripod. There is my favorite piece of artwork with that snow. That's the artwork for the Sega Saturn version. Just fantastic. That is my favorite piece of artwork for any Lunar game. I just love that snow and just the way Lucia and Hero look on there. Although that one's pretty nice, too. i never seen that one before. And you got Galleon. Lucia. Good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. Let's see what else. And for all those crazy collectors out there, free Lunar poster! Free Lunar 2 poster! My favorite poster! I should send this in, right? Right? I should fill... Ooh, the thing fell off the front. Um, I should fill that out and send that in. Um, yeah, I'm sure Working Designs would send me my free poster. Uh, that's nice that it has that card in there, though, a lot of people. And then there's that black, and then back, and there's the back cover. So that is the Lunar 2 Eternal Blue. If you're wondering why I said when I, something fell off, it's like the little thing off the front of the HD camera. I'm going to have to super glue that back on. But um, Lunar 2 Eternal Blue Strategy Guide by Working Designs. Fantastic find. I definitely wanted to show this off to you guys because there's a lot of Lunar fans out there. And I don't know if anyone's actually just gone through the book and shown it. So um, hopefully uh, this is something that um, appealed to you guys and you liked it. Um, hopefully I can find the Silver Star Story one for a good price. I'm going to have to go on and look. I might do that next after I post this on there. But uh, there is that. And, um, you know, um, I'll put up another video here soon. 
I uh, don't know what I'll do next, but uh, it'll be something. Probably not as cool as this, because this was really friggin' cool. But, um, alright guys, um, I hope you all had a happy new year. Um, thank you guys all so much for your, your very kind comments. Um, I'm, I'm just, I, it, I'm taken aback that you guys actually uh, give two shits about what I'm saying here. So anytime you guys are like, oh, I love your channel, I'm just, I'm floored. So, um, thank you guys so much for the support. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time.